Hello and welcome back to my channel. As we approach the new tax year, the 6th of April, it's important to be aware of the changes that will be coming into effect. The last 12 months have been a particularly turbulent time for the UK government, with the numerous tax changes and U-turns leading to confusion about what taxes are actually changing and what is staying the same. Let's clear this up, shall we? I'm Cosan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. Let us dive into the world of taxes and tax allowances, and we will explore the key changes that will take place in the new financial year, as well as the ones that will remain unchanged. Let us start with the income tax and personal tax allowances, as these go hand in hand. And this is one of the U-turns following on from our very successful and long-standing Liz Trust government. Starting with the personal allowance, which is the amount of income you're allowed to earn before paying tax on it. The allowance currently stands at £12,570 and has been since 2021. The personal allowance used to see regular increases to take into account inflation. However, this seems to be a thing of the past as the threshold will stay the same in the new tax year until April 2028, making this the longest tax allowance free since the introduction of the personal allowance. Looking at the tax bands, which are of course split into three segments, you have the basic rate, higher rate and additional rate tax holders. Looking at the basic rate, which kicks in after the personal allowance and up to £50,270 at a rate of 20% tax. And this range has also been frozen until April 2028. However, there are changes in store for the higher rate and additional rate earners. The higher rate threshold currently set at 40% tax for incomes above £50,271 and below £150,000 will be reduced to £125,140. This means that anyone earning more than that will have to pay more tax in the new financial year, as more of their income will fall under the additional rate threshold, currently set at 45% tax. Moving on to another tax allowance, and this time it is the capital gains tax allowance. This is an allowance you get before being charged on your profits you make from the sale of an asset, second property, or a valuable possession. And this allowance is undergoing significant changes. Currently, this allowance stands at £12,300 per tax year, which means you can earn up to this amount in profit before paying any taxes. The tax rate you pay will depend on your earnings, but it does range from 10 to 20% for assets and up to 28% on second properties. However, starting from April 2023, this allowance will be drastically reduced to just £6,000 per tax year with another further proposed cut to £3,000 from April 2024, with the tax rate remaining the same as before. This reduction in allowance is alarming, especially for those selling on second properties. I couldn't find any evidence on this, but I personally have noticed more second homes being put on the market due to the increase in interest rates. And given this timely sting of lowering the capital gains tax allowance, it almost feels like it's an extremely timely move by the government. <laughs> Anyway, that is just speculation. Aside from second homes, there are of course potential ways you can counter this reduction in the allowance by moving any investments you have into a stocks and shares ISA, which has an allowance of £20,000 per tax year. Any profits made within this tax wrapper will be removed from your capital gains tax bill. So it is definitely a move worth investigating to avoid any future hefty tax bill when it comes to realizing gains on your investments. Check out this video to learn more. Unfortunately, the changes to tax allowances aren't limited to the capital gains tax. They also affect dividend allowance. Dividends are payments you receive as a shareholder in a company, typically when you invest in a stock. Currently, there is a £2,000 allowance, which means you can earn up to £2,000 per tax year on dividend income before incurring any tax charges. Again, the amount of tax you pay will depend on your income bracket. It is 8.75% for basic rate holders, 33.75 for higher rate, and 39.35 for additional rate income earners. Unfortunately, the dividend allowance is also facing double cuts, similar to the capital gains tax allowance. Starting from April 2023, the allowance will be reduced from £2,000 to £1,000 per tax year, and from April 2024, it will be reduced further to £500, with the tax rate remaining the same as before. Again, there are a few ways to help reduce your exposure to this tax bill. One thing you can consider is transferring any stocks you hold within a Stocks and Shares ISA to help prevent any potential hefty bill. Dividend earned from pensions is also not subject to tax, and there are also benefits if you are a married couple, so worth investigating. Now moving on to a tax that will see an increase for many, and that is the Council Tax Bill. 
Now this is a tax you pay to your local council which funds the several services it provides you, such as rubbish collection and libraries. Unfortunately, under the new rules set out by the government in the autumn statement, councils can actually increase their council tax bill by up to 5% without a vote. Previously, this was capped at 3%. As a result, many councils have already announced plans to increase the tax by the maximum allowed from April 2023, and this is due to inflationary pressures affecting both councils and homeowners. The average band across England is currently 1,996 per year, and a 5% increase will see it rise by £99 on average. To see which councils have confirmed their increases and by how much, you can check out the link in the description box down below. Now those are all the tax changes. Now let's look at what is staying the same, starting with the national insurance tax. And now this is a tax on your earnings that help fund certain state benefits, such as state pension and maternity allowance. The national insurance tax rate has been on a somewhat roller coaster of a ride in 2022. Under Boris Johnson's government, we saw the rate increase from 12 to 13.5%, along with an increase in the national insurance allowance from 9,880 to 12,570. However, in September, the new government, led by Liz Truss, decided to scrap the increase and revert the national insurance rate back down to 12%. For the upcoming tax year, there are no further changes to the national insurance, which should be a relief for many. Stamp duty is another tax that saw changes under the Liz Trust government. It is a form of land tax that you have to pay in the UK when you purchase a property. At the beginning of 2022, if you were a first time buyer, you would only have to pay stamp duty after the first £300,000 of the purchase price. By the end of the year, this threshold was increased to £425,000. For existing homeowners at the beginning of 2022, you would only have to pay stamp duty after the first £125,000, but this also was increased to 250 pounds later on in the year. The rate of stamp duty tax does range from 5 to 12% and this all depends on the purchase price of your property. The increase in the stamp duty tax allowance will remain frozen until 2025. We now move on to the inheritance tax, which is one of the most important aspects to consider when it comes to financial planning, and it's often an overlooked one. Inheritance tax, for those that don't know, comes into effect after your passing and your assets are passed on onto your heirs. Here in the UK, inheritance tax can take a substantial chunk out of your estate with assets being charged at a 40% tax rate. Everyone does get an allowance, and this allowance has a threshold of £325,000 in place. But it is important to know that this allowance has already been frozen until 2026 and it's just been extended to stay the same until 2028. And therefore, when we're talking about real terms, the allowance is actually being reduced because we are losing out to inflation. I personally don't believe people consider this tax bill seriously enough. Giving you a quick example, if you pass on assets that are worth £500,000, which depending on where you live on in the UK can easily be met by just purchasing one property, your heirs could be faced with a tax bill of up to £70,000, which is a hard pill to swallow. I would highly recommend watching this video here, where I discuss various strategies to help reduce your inheritance tax bill. And finally, moving on to the personal savings allowance, which is the amount of interest you can earn before paying any taxes on it. The amount of personal savings allowance a person receives will depend on their income bracket. So if you are a basic rate taxpayer, your allowance is £1,000 per year. If you earn more than this, you will be charged a 20% tax on your interest earned. If you are a higher rate earner, this is £500 per tax year, and going above this will incur a 40% charge. And if you are an additional rate earner, you have no allowance whatsoever, and therefore any interest gained will be charged at 45%. Now, although there are no changes, you do still need to be cautious, because what has changed instead is the average saving rate provided by most lenders. I don't have to remind you that borrowing money has become more expensive over the course of 2022. The Bank of England base rate, which started off at 0.25% at the beginning of 2022, and just over 12 months later, now currently stands at 4%. And this does have a direct impact on how much lenders offer when saving and borrowing money with them. According to Money Fact data, the average interest earned on an easy access account in January 2022 was 0.2% which meant a person would need to hold £500,000 in savings to breach the £1,000 personal allowance threshold. Now, this is quite a mean feat and generally wouldn't affect most people. However, since February 2023, the average stands now at 1.73%, which now means it would take a savings account to hold £58,000 to breach the limit. 
This is still of course a lot of money, but not what most people would consider impossible. And if you are a higher rate earner, you would only need to hold around about £29,000 to breach the threshold. So do be cautious on how much cash you do have in your savings account. And again, look at holding your money in a cash ISA where any interest earned will never be subject to any tax. Cool, so those are the key taxes and tax allowance changes that you should know for the next tax year. Let me know in the comment section down below how you are preparing and if there was any that I missed. And remember to like and subscribe. See you later. Bye. Bye.